Hi there, welcome to Teachers Tech. My name is Jamie and it's great to have you here. This is a beginner's class in how to use the new Microsoft Outlook. So maybe you're using your old one, you toggle this on and you notice the experience changed with Microsoft Outlook. Or maybe you're brand new to this and you just wanna learn how to use Microsoft Outlook to manage your email. So this is a beginner's class on the new Microsoft Outlook where I'm gonna go over the basics of setting up your email, uh, how to organize your email, and I'll continue on with separate videos to help you even learn more to get more efficient with using all the different parts of Microsoft Outlook. So let's get started on this new Microsoft Outlook experience today on Teachers Tech. Let's start with opening the new Microsoft Outlook because you might have a couple different versions on your computer. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go just to the search down here. I'm on Windows 11 and notice that there is an Outlook here. This is actually the old one. If I go and just type Outlook in here, notice I get a couple different ones. So I'm gonna finish typing. I have the Outlook app and then I have the Outlook new. You can still access the Outlook new from the old one and I'm gonna do that first. So maybe you've opened up your Outlook app here. Uh, you're gonna notice that right at the beginning I had a toggle and I'd already toggled it on. If I took a look at the top right hand corner, I can just toggle this on and it's gonna ask me to make the switch. If your Windows 11 is updated, you probably already have it installed on your computer and you can just hit switch and you're gonna see it just jump right over and the same account that I have installed on it just gets pulled over with it and the emails as well. Now, I do wanna point out if I go back to search and type store, so I'm just gonna to go to the Microsoft store. If you don't have it on your computer that way, you can access it through here. So if you just do a search for, uh, for it, you're gonna notice that Outlook is the app that you can install. I already have it installed on my computer, but if you click on it, uh, you'll notice that if it isn't installed this way, it will ask you to install. So a couple different ways you can make sure you're gonna be in the new Microsoft Outlook that I'm gonna show you today how to use. If this is your first time logging in to the new Microsoft Outlook, you're gonna to have to log in with an email account and you have a variety of different options that you can use. You could use an Outlook account if you have one, a Gmail account, a Yahoo, uh, it could be an iCloud account. So you have lots of different options. Maybe you have a school or work account and then you can use that as well. If you don't have an account at all, just click down here and create an Outlook account and then you're gonna be able to follow along with the tutorial today. For myself, I'm logging in with a Microsoft 365 demo account that I have. So I have it already written into here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue and it's gonna ask me to put the password at the next step. So I just have to place my password in and sign in at this point. Now that I'm logged in, you're gonna notice on the left-hand side over here, the email that I signed into right here. I can go ahead and hit the little expansion arrow to see the different contents below it, whether it be in the inbox, the drafts, the sent items, all of these right here are my inbox. So these are all the emails that have been sent to this email address. I do wanna point out, if I go ahead and close this up, if you want to add more accounts to it, you just have to go through the same process. Just click here, hit account. Now, do you wanna add a Gmail account? You can have a mixture of different accounts. So go ahead and try that if you want to have two, three, or more on this. So I just wanted to point that out to know that you're not limited to that one account. Now let's do a little walk around. If you're used to Microsoft products like Excel or Word, up at the top, you're gonna to have your menu. So home, view, help, these are our menu. Below, we have a ribbon. Now with this new Microsoft Outlook, it's condensed. What I mean, it's not showing everything like the old one might. But if I go over on the side right here, the ribbon display options and drop down, I can go back to the classic ribbon here. So if I click it, it expands it. So if you wanna see, be able to see all the different items where it's uh, maybe just easier to read for you, go ahead to switch to that view. And if you click down here, notice it that that's under the layout here of the classic ribbon or simplified ribbon if you wanna switch back. The other things I wanna point out before we start sending, composing any email is down over here on the left-hand side. 
uh, at any time to get back to your mail, you need to click this top. So if all of a sudden you're in the calendar here and you're not seeing your email, just go back up to mail here and it will bring you back to this page. Now, I'm going to continue on just to point out some of these things. And I'll have a different video going over uh, this because working with a calendar in your email is a very important thing. It just can make things more and more efficient, especially if you're part of uh, all the Microsoft products. This is where you can add your events, uh, making sure that you stay on top of everything and connecting things to your email as well. We have people. So this is going to be our contact list. I don't have any contacts with this email, but we can create and I'll go over that a bit later also as well. We have groups. So groups here, uh, if I'm working in different projects together, it's I'm using a Microsoft account, a 365 with multiple people. So then uh, we can be working together easier. You might not see some of these um, items. If you're logged in with a Gmail account, you might not see groups or to do. So if I go to to do here, this is going to open up on the web page. To do is a great way to, um, you know, just keep your task and everything in order. I have a different video on that. I'll put a link to that. And if I just uh, close down here or minimize that, I can also connect to my OneDrive. OneDrive, if you have your uh, account, Microsoft account, this is where you're going to be working, saving your items to the cloud. So if I look, I have my files, I have shared files, uh, everything's connected through OneDrive. I have a different video on that as well that I'll explain more to you on how everything works. And then we can also connect to more apps. So if I go to here, more apps, if you want to launch an Excel, a Word, I can click on it and it just gives you that easy access. Right now it is opening it online, but remember if you're working in the Microsoft system, whether you're using the app and you're logging into the same account, everything's connected. So that was a little walk around of just uh, looking at the new Microsoft Outlook. And remember, just go back up here to mail because this is where we're going to continue from. Before I show you how to send an email, I just want to make sure that you have the customization to get the look and feel that you want inside the new Microsoft Outlook. In the menu, go over to view here. And I just want to point out some ways that you can change things. Um, if we, you could do the quick drop downs on any of these. So if I was looking at ribbon and I already showed you the difference between the simplified or classic, we have our folder pane. If I go hide, you can see how it changes. So you can make these quick adjust adjustments. Do you want to show on right or show at the bottom? So now the messages would be below. So you can quickly make those changes. I prefer on the right, but everybody's going to be different. We have some different density. So if I go compact, you can see how it just kind of gives you, a, shows you a lot more to it. So find what you know works best for you. The other thing I want to point out is under these view settings. I know with uh, different people, they might like, uh, you know, here we go from focused inbox to our text. I'm not going to change everything. I just want to point out these. Uh, some of these would, could have been quickly done in the drop down uh, before, but show email as individual messages, newest on top, newest on the bottom, show each message separately. So these are some things that you might want to think about how to change. Uh, the other thing, if I go to general, uh, if we look at the appearance, do you like light or dark mode? So if I go to dark mode, you can see uh, if I close out of it, you can get that look of the contrast between the white and the black. I'm going to just use light for this, but set it how you'd want. We also have some themes in here as well. So if I click on any of these uh, around the bar, everything change changes there. So go make some adjustments to get, uh, I'm just going to discard, so I'm not going to save anything for this and get it set up the way you want before we create our first email here. Let me show you how to compose a new email in Microsoft Outlook. I'm going to go up to here and I'm just going to hover for a moment. When I hover, it also shows you the shortcut Control plus N. If I click on this, it opens it up in this over here. Control plus N would do the same. Right away, I just want to show you uh, these over here, these features. If I don't want this embedded into this, I can pop it out in a new window. So I go open out of a new window. It opens this up. Now I can move this around separately. This is where I'm going to compose my email. I can stretch it, set it up the way I want. All these features are still the same, whether it's embedded or not. 
If I hit close, it deletes the message. So if I go back to it again, notice it opens it back up in there. This is also the discard. If I started writing email, I don't need it. I could discard it from here. And I can also change if I wanted sizing differently uh, to make it more comfortable to read. Now, the other thing I want to point out right away, when I'm composing a new email, if I look at up the top, I have all these brand new menu items here. And then underneath, I have all these options on my ribbon. It, it defaults to go under message here. And under message, I get everything in here. So what I mean, here's message. And take a look at here. I can insert pictures. I can insert emojis, a table. If I go to insert, here's picture, emoji, table. I'm getting the same options. Under message, I can kind of see everything. But if you want to kind of just think about it as, oh, if I'm inserting something into here, I go to insert. And this is where I can attach my files. I can link things, all those. But I can also get it for message. If I wanted to format my text, I get all these options to format my text. But under message, it's also here as well. So I just wanted to point out how the menu uh, and the ribbon was working here. So let's go ahead and just start uh, thinking about who we would send this message to. Now, since this email I'm using is part of an organization, it can pick up other emails in that organization. You can see they all have uh, the same, uh, the same uh, at leveragingdigital.com at the end. I can go ahead and choose one of these people to email. So if I was going to go with Kathy, it places an email in here right away. Now you might not have that pop open if you're not using part of a, uh, you know, a corporate or a school account there, but uh, you can just type in an email as well. So if I was going to go uh, at this one, if I was typing in I email like this, so let's say at teachers.tech, a different email one I have, and then I just put a comma after, I can also do it like this. So I have two different ones I was going to send. This one's outside of the organization. Uh, it's not in that leveraging digital one. This, if I went and clicked here, I could go directly to my contact. So if I hit two, if I had contacts in this one, I could search a list. So it's really good to start building up your contact list because it will make things a lot easier. And then you're, and I'll come back to creating your contacts, but that's how you would easily access your contacts from right here. And anytime I click on any of these, the contacts will come up. So we have CC here. So I could also be wanting maybe to add a person in here. So maybe also send this uh, email to someone else. Now, if I do that like this, what's going to happen is it will uh, send to these, these two people up here and then also to this person. But I still can, whoever gets these emails can see who it's sent to. So you need to be careful when you send an email that you're not just sharing other people's emails uh, by uh, just putting a long list of emails here because people can see who else you sent that email to. To avoid this, do this. Go to BCC, the blind carbon copy. If I put a list of people here and now everybody will get the email, but they won't know who else got the email. So they won't be able to see the whole list of people uh, that you sent the email to. So this is an important thing to know how to use these ones correctly, whether it be CCC or BCC. And you're going to place these in the same by just putting the emails in or getting to the contacts like this. Now, as I keep moving down, we have our subject. So maybe I want somebody to sign something. So if I say, please sign, I can uh, go ahead and put in the uh, just the subject area like this and make it how I want. As we're writing emails, sometimes we don't always finish, but it is always getting saved as a draft and you can always go back and access it. So what I mean by this is notice it says draft saved at 2.13 p.m. If I look up top in the ribbon up here, I also have save draft if I was, I can go ahead. And if I go over to the left hand side here, I just expand this to open it. We have inbox, which this is, but if I go to drafts here, this is the email that I haven't sent yet. So if I go ahead and click on it here, 
it opens it back up. So I actually double clicked on it here too. So if I just click on it once again, and it opens up just like this, and now I can continue writing it. So even if you don't finish, you can always go to your drafts. Uh, if you didn't discard it, it will be there that you can continue it and you have all the same options. So what's the next thing that you might do in an email? Well, you'll probably write something. So if I go and just write a quick message here and I say, please, uh, please sign. And notice right away, it's kind of guessing to uh, what I might want to say and, and return. If I hit the tab, it goes and finishes that off. Now I can go and just keep this. I could write a paragraph. I'm not going to write a lot in this. It just works like using Microsoft Word. I can format this. So as mentioned in the message up here, if I look at this, I could change it to a different font. I could change it to a different color. So another way I could get to the formatting, if I go and just click in here, so if I double click, notice it highlights return. If I triple click, it highlights everything. And when I do this, it allows the formatting to come up right here. This formatting is the same as this formatting here. So if I wanted to change my font, I could go through the list that, uh, that they have in here and make a change. And you can see how the, uh, the font will change. So you can pick a different one. That one's more noticeable. I could change the size. I could change the color to this. Uh, if I wanted it to be, let's say a purple, you can see it works just like Microsoft, uh, like Microsoft Word or many of the other Microsoft products. I can actually put a link in here. So if you wanted to link this to somewhere, I could say this is what gets displayed and I could copy paste maybe a web address, uh, website in there I wanted to share. So that's how I would go and insert the link. Now, as you go down, you can just go ahead and I can hit enter and work like this. So very simply, you write your email after that, but you might want to add a few more things to this. So maybe I should add an attachment since I'm saying, please sign something. If I look up and I'm under the message menu and I have attach file, and I mentioned before, I could go to insert and attach file as well. If I look at this, I can drop down from this. Where do I want to attach it from? Is it a link, upload and share, OneDrive? I'm just gonna say from my computer, I'm gonna browse. And what do I want to attach? Well, maybe on my desktop, I have these signatures here, and it's gonna be this one right here, this PDF I could put in. And it places it right here. You can see that it's uploading. If I drop down on this arrow, I have some options, I could preview it, I could upload it to OneDrive, I could download it, or I could remove it from here. So something else that you might want to, uh, to add to this is maybe a picture. And if I go back up to here, I could add my pictures, I could go grab something uh, from, so this is just an example, if I grab a picture from my computer, I'll just do a screenshot here. So maybe I take a screenshot and I wanna show somebody a new product and it places it in. I can go through and size this. I can even curve this. So change the angle, look at how I can drag this. So it gives me a lot of flexibility inside Microsoft Outlook to do this. So I've gone through on this one so far, I've showed you where the drafts are if you're not done, how to add the emails, how to add, or how to add to who you're sending it to, CC, talked about the BCC, you have a subject line, we've done attachments, we put in some text, and we put in an image. Now, you can still add more, I'm not gonna go through any of the, all of these, but you can play with these. If you wanted the emojis, you can click on those to add. If you needed a table, you could quickly add a table to this and you can make your, uh, make your emails very clean to help organize everything. When you're all done, this email and you're ready to send, just go ahead and hit send. Notice that you have an option. So I could hit send right away, but let's say if I didn't wanna send right away, I could schedule a send. So I have this email ready. When do I wanna send this? So if I know it's not a good time, do I wanna send it tomorrow or Sunday? I could pick a time by going custom time. So that's an important option to know uh, when to when to send if, you're, if you wanted to adjust it and you don't have to worry about it once you send it, sent it. So I can go ahead and hit send now and this will send it automatically. Now, another thing is that you might wanna check is what did I send? 
If I look over in my email over here and I've showed you, so this is our inbox here. We have our drafts that we'd be working on that if we ever don't finish, here's our sent items. So this is the email I just sent here and I can always go back and see the different emails that I sent. If I wanted to make sure I wrote something correctly, who I sent it to, I can check it again in there. So that's sending an email in the new Microsoft Outlook. To add people quickly to your contact list, just go to people here. Now you could go one at a time if you go add contact here and just fill in the information here. So put the names, last name, email, and just go through and do this. You can even add a photo by selecting here. When you're done, hit save. I'm just canceling uh, for this demo here. But we could also import your contact. So maybe you have a large list from a different email service that you've been using and you exported those as a CSV file. So if I go import contacts, then I could go and have that file and browse to it and import those all at once. And that could save you a lot of time so you don't have to enter them in one at a time. So just some couple, a couple different quick ways to enter your contact information. So when you're sending emails, you can just click that to button. So you can see I just got a new email in and let's go ahead and check it. I'm just going to go click on it. So someone sent me this email and right away I can see who uh, it was sent to right here. So I can see Ashton, Jamie Keat and demo. So this is what I meant by that. And when I sent that, I didn't use the BCC. I can see the complete list of who was ever on this email. I can see who sent it to me right up at the top. Now, uh, what I can do right away, if I wanted to reply to this, I could go ahead and click reply. If I just do reply, it's just going to send it back to this one right here, this teacher's tech demo. So if I hit reply, it goes ahead and opens up a new email that's only going to be sent to this one. I'm just going to hit delete. I'm going to hit OK. And it doesn't delete this message just where I was about to respond to it. We have reply all. When we do this, now it's going to be yes to the Jamie Keat at Teachers Tech demo one, but it's also to others. If I just select this, you'll notice that it shows me everybody that's going to be that the email is going to be sent to. So the person that sent it and plus the two others. I'm going to hit delete on this one as well, discard this. And I have the other option of forwarding this. So uh, if I go ahead and forward this, it's not going to be to the same, it's not going to respond to the same people that sent the email. I could send this to somebody completely different. So if I wanted to, if someone sent me this email and I wanted to forward this to maybe a boss or someone or and say, hey, take a look at this email that somebody sent me. Could you help me with this? and then the other ones aren't notified of it. So I just wanted to point out those different options to responding to the email. We also have the options right up here of reply, reply all, and forward. And we have a few different options here that we can do. I'm not going to get through, I uh, point out all these in this one, uh, but I just want you to know that these options are here as well. So let's look at some other options we can do with this received email. Now, if we hover over it, we can get some options right away. Notice if I move my mouse over top, I could delete. If you want to get rid of it, just simply hit delete. But maybe you make the mistake and say, ah, I didn't want to delete that. Take a look at this. If I go back under the email here and look into the deleted items, so if I select it, here it is right here. This is just what I just deleted. I could remove it from deleted items permanently right here, but I could select this one. And if I hit restore, notice it's out of here. But if I go back to my inbox, here it is right here. So if you delete it, don't worry, you can bring it back as well. Let's look at some of the other options. The other thing on these ones, notice how my name's it bolded. Well, that's because it's unread. If I click on it and after I've uh, read it, then it will go off of it. So just like that, I've selected. You can turn it back, uh, the unread back and forth. So mark is unread. If I select this one, notice it goes back to bold. So maybe you want to bring attention to it uh, still, and then you can bring it back like that. Or I could make sure that it goes back to normal to know that I have read it. 
Now let's look at the next tab. This is flagged message. This goes into your task when you flag it. So if there's something you want to follow up about this email on and you don't want to forget it. So sometimes I get lots of different emails and I uh, need to flag them. So then I kind of have a list. So if I flag it like this, and now I'm just going to bring over my other window that has uh, the Microsoft task on it that I mentioned earlier. It goes into the task right here. And when I'm done it, I can click that I'm done it from this point. So that's a handy feature to bring it in over there. The uh, task was here and it just popped open on a different window when I did it before. And we also have, oh, I'll point out if I right click on this one, uh, we can go today, tomorrow, we'll set the time when the task would be done. And we can also mark it as complete or clear the flag there. Now we can pin this. If you want to make sure that your message is at the top all the time, if I pin it, it will stay at the top. So if it's an important message or has some information on it, you can pin it to the top and it's always going to be there. So that's just a little bit about managing those as those emails come in so you don't lose anything and you can keep track of everything. The other thing I want to point out is sorting and searching in here. Uh, we can clean out our inbox if you want very quickly. We don't have to do this one at a time. Notice if I go ahead and hit select, I get all these boxes and then I can select the top one. So everything in my inbox is now selected. I could go and empty the folders, get, get, empty this folder, this inbox folder and get rid of it. I could flag it, mark as red. So if I there were some, if I want them marked as all red, if I select it and then I unselect, now everything's done at once. So you don't have to go through and do it one at a time. Uh, the other thing I want to point out are the filters. As you get lots of different emails and you're searching, I don't delete a lot of my emails. I might put them into folders. I'll show you that in a moment. But we can filter. What do we want to filter? We could filter by unread. We could look for flagged. So if you do have different ones flagged, uh, if I go ahead and flag this and I have filter, maybe I'll, fill, I'll flag two here. I'll just put a couple flags on here and then I'll go ahead and filter the flag those two come up. So it's an easy way to sort through your different ones. Um, so I'll click on it again, take off that filter and anything that mentions me has files and even sort. So I could be looking at it by date from size. So I could be looking through all these different things to find a certain email because you can get thousands of uh, thousands of them on there. Do you want the oldest on top or the newest on top? I like the newest just to keep everything flowing uh, just the way my mind works. I think most people would do it that way too. So that's just a little bit about organization with the emails one by one or trying to sort your inbox to find something. Now I want to show you a couple of new ways that you can keep everything organized in the new Microsoft Outlook. And one of them is categorize. So let's go back to this email here. And I want to point out, so under the home menu and inside here, uh, we can look at, we have categorize. So if I uh, have this message selected and I can drop down, I can pick a category. So if I was like green, notice it added this categorize, category to this. So if I click the message here and um, if I click off a different one, it's not there. But if I click on this one, it has this here. Now, if I click on just this green category, I'm going to give a couple this one. I'm going to give a different way I can give that category. So if I right click, I have categorize here. So I could go green as well. If I go ahead and just uh, click on that green, it brings me to everything in the green category. So if I click back to my inbox, I get back to these ones. They're simple to remove. You can just hit the X here. I can also do a search. So notice up in the search, and the search is a powerful thing to get used to. If I just start typing green category and hit green category, it will find everything that I've tagged with that green category. So just a different way to think about how to organize things. And if you like the color method to be able to quickly see also how it's categorized. If I go back to this, I just want to mention with these, with the categorize here, you can manage. So these are by default here. We can create new categories, clear categories, or even manage the categories. So if I hit click manage, if I didn't want this to be green, I could delete this, star this. I could go ahead and edit this differently. So you can uh, name it what you want to just quickly be able to see all your different groups that you're putting together and color is a good way to do that. 
The other way you can uh, kind of keep everything neat is to create folders. So we can do this in a couple different ways as well. I can do it from any email. So if I right click on this one, notice I can go through and see all the different things that I can do, just like it with categorize. If I say move, well, where do I want to move this to? Uh, well, I could put it in a folder. So if I go ahead and say add new folder, I'll just click on this new folder name. And this is just a demo today. So I'm going to click demo here and hit save. On the left hand side over here, I have a folder that just got created called demo. So now if I click on it, I can see the email that I have is inside of here. I can also, if I didn't want it to be in here anymore, I could take it and actually drag it back into my inbox that way as well. Or I could drag it into demo. So I could grab a bunch of them. I could go back to the selection tool and select multiple ones and then drag them in to there. So it's very easy to keep things organized. As I go to this one now, you see the three that I just put in there, but simply right click and move it to where you want. You could put it back into your inbox or just simply drag. So try categorizing your emails or putting them in folders. I hope this beginner's class video in the new Microsoft Outlook has been helpful for you. I'm going to follow this up with more of an intermediate one. Just go over uh, some of the other topics that can even help you get more efficient with using Microsoft Outlook. And also I'll do another one on the calendar as well. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.